The first thing I want to teach you is how the supernatural is manifested. You see, in this kingdom, the supernatural is a synergy between the word of God and the spirit of God. The union of the word and the spirit. I would learn this in a Reinhard Bonke crusade in 2004. I went to Joss from Kaduna to attend the Reinhard Bonke crusade when he came. I was in that field. I remember. And I saw this man who came all the way from overseas. And the ground was packed with probably tens of thousands of people. Hungry people desperate to receive from this veteran of the gospel who had traveled from nation to nation and I was there scattered in the crowd I remember standing there with hunger I was already in ministry I had already seen the power of God to a measure but I knew that there had to be more and he preached in his manner a very simple message and this is where some of us that God has committed a bit of the grace for revelation usually we do not have the patience to hear people sound very simple because it almost looks insulting very simple childlike kindergarten kind of expression but when he was done listen carefully he was about to minister the baptism and then to pray for the sick and he was just trying to take water i was part of the tens of thousands of crowds suddenly my eyes opened right there in that crusade ground i thought other people were seeing it suddenly i see this bird as big as this auditorium if not bigger than it just moving round hovering round the entire space where the crusade was happening it had all kinds of silvery bands tied to its wings just like that it was not flapping them it was just moving I was looking what is this brilliance beauty as though the Sun was in the bed and then the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters why because the Word of God was about to come and the Holy Ghost taught me in that encounter that it is the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit that produces the miraculous it was not in a bible study session i was there having an encounter on a crusade ground that's why you see when people come to church and are distracted is a spirit because you don't know the moment when your word will come i can be preaching now and in the midst of my sermon god can open your eyes and be showing you something else when I saw that, do you know this? When I was back from that vision, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I turned. I knew I had caught something. I knew that I was about to step into the realm of signs, of wonders. And I saw people healed. I saw all kinds of dramatic miracles. And I said, my God, so I can tell you this listen to me if you want to manifest the supernatural that you have received it is a union of the strength of the Word of God in you and the ministry of the Spirit this is what separates miracles from superstition the Word and the Spirit now there there is a big problem with the body of Christ as far as the dynamics of the manifestation especially the charismatics and the Pentecostals it's like there is a group that chose the spirit we are the spirit people we pray in tongues we pray we prophesy we do all of this doesn't matter whether we have respect for scripture or not I'm not being sarcastic you know I'm sent to the body and then there are those who are the word people forget about all those spirit things just teach the word both of them are incomplete
it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come it is the spirit of god who hovered around the face of the waters but do you know when the spirit of god hovered around the face of the water creation did not happen until the word came and elohim said light but if elohim had spoken and the spirit of god did not hover there still will not be a miracle what does that tell you there are two principal tools or two principal platforms that the believers both access and manifest the supernatural number one is the ministry of the word what does that mean the word of god is powerful because all creation happens through the word let me give you a few scriptures lend me a few minutes colossians 1 16 media let's work together colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 please look up it says for by him were all things created how many things were created things that are in heaven things that are in earth visible and invisible look how powerful the word is so the word of god can create visible things like a job visible things like physical healing to a body visible things like opportunities invisible things whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him john chapter 1 and verse 3 a scripture that we've worked on in this house all things were made by him and without him that means outside of his influence and outside of his partnership was not anything made that was made hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person please look up it says and upholding how many things all things by the word of his power he holds all things including the person to help you he holds him by the word of his power including your destiny helper including the form that has your contract written on it it is held by the word of his power Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 Paul teaching us on faith he says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means let it be let it not be new to you the material realm came from the immaterial realm just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal it is only unseen to the optical eye but it is on is real very very real so the union of the word listen according to colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 the bible declares that the word of christ should dwell in us richly in all wisdom so the more the word of god becomes your obsession listen carefully the more you learn scripture the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word you are empowering yourself to manifest the supernatural let me tell you what happens in the body of christ and this is why there is a high margin of error in our administering the supernatural we ignore the word all we look for is anointing all we look for is vessels all we look for is a bottle of oil or a bottle of some kind of emblem i'm not saying those things are wrong in themselves but all things start with the word the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word the more you are opening yourself to the supernatural question how did wine come about when the feast remember in in, in the wedding in in and in, in john chapter 2 the first miracle of Jesus according to the synoptic account of John water turned to wine it always starts as water if you want wine get water first if it is God that will turn that water to wine if it's God that will give you wine it will not start as wine it will start as water it is the Word of God that you must have and then as you go that word is now turned to wine if it's a job that you need if it's god that will give you that job it will not start with a job it will start with the word it is as you engage in the word the word will now change to a job 
Are you seeing it now? If it is breakthrough you want and you go to God and say, Lord, all I want is breakthrough. God says, go back to the word. It is as the word prevails in your heart, the word will now become that breakthrough. If you look for things outside of the word, you may never find them. It is the word that metamorphoses into those things. The word of God. Number two is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We see the classic dynamics of manifesting the supernatural in Ezekiel chapter 37. Please give it to us very quickly. Ezekiel 37. Let's start from verse 1. Ezekiel 37. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, the Bible says, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Verse 3. He said unto me, Son of man, question now, can these bones live? And the prophet answered, O Lord God, thou knowest verse 4 he said prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye bones hear whose word you do the speaking but the word is not your own when you speak your word it will not happen God is the word but you are the voice like John said if you want to be the word yourself that one you are you are in trouble already the realm of the spirit will not respect your word it respects God's word even if a donkey speaks God's word, the realm of the spirit will obey it. Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause what? Breath. Are you seeing now that the first miracle that happened was breath to enter them first. If there is no breath, there cannot be life. And you shall leave. Verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall leave and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And bones came together, bone to his bone. That means, watch this. If I disregard the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I do not grow in my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It is true that I am a recipient of the life of God, that divinity resides within me, but I may never be able to manifest that reality. Listen carefully. Most believers continue to brag and boast that they are recipients of the life of God. And it's a fact based on what the Bible says. But you see, let me tell you the truth. Releasing the reality of that life comes when you understand these dynamics. The word of God. The ministry of the word you must engage with the word you must stay with the word what is the benefit of the word number one the word of God shows you how God operates number two the word of God exposes you to the boundaries of God's commitments to you God is only committed to what he said to you not what you want it is your assignment to find out what he said that relates to what you want God is all powerful, but that does not just mean he does anything anyhow. No. He is regulated by his word. The word of God defines the boundary and the coordinates of God's power. God's power does not just operate randomly. His word. So, if what you want is lifting, you cannot have lifting until you can find from scripture where God committed himself to you on that wise. Is there any assurance based on the word of God that he said he will lift you? 
Yes, there is such an assurance. Number one, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Number two, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says, if it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day. It says that the Lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth. There is a condition. Is there any scripture that supports your advocating your rising? Yes. Yes. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. So you can carry these scriptures now. You have satisfied the word component. Now you have to engage the spirit. Just because you have found the word does not mean the supernatural will manifest. You Now God is bound by his word because he has chosen to exalt his word even above his reputation i have found the word that guarantees that god can lift me that god will lift me based on his desire for me you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit it is the spirit that gives life to that letter hallelujah are we together now one of the ways we engage the ministry of the holy spirit for our profiting is through the priesthood ministry of prayer write it down the priesthood ministry of prayer you will never truly manifest the supernatural if you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer do you know why he gave us the prayer language do you realize that the prayer language is connected to the holy spirit Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come. In Acts chapter 2, we do not see them receiving power. We see them receiving tongues. But what he said, he never said you shall receive tongues. He said you shall receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, we see them receiving tongues. That means there is a relationship between that language of the Spirit and the release of spiritual power. If I tell you, for instance, that I am going to give you a thousand dollars a thousand dollars anything that comes from me to you is a thousand dollars suddenly you see someone holding a gift pack coming to you what should you suspect is in it because my commitment to you was not a gift pack my commitment to you was a thousand dollars so if I'm bringing you a gift pack a wise person will open it to say the thousand dollars you said must be there so if he said, I will give you power, and yet what you got in the very next chapter is a language, there must be a relationship between that language and the power, he said. Are we together? Yes. Most people do not pray, and yet they want to command superior levels of the supernatural. We have agreed here that God is not a magician. Can I tell you sincerely? A generation that does not pray will truly be a powerless generation. Jesus himself recognized the presence of principalities and powers. The Bible says he's head of them. You must get to a point in your life where you know how to engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Engaging the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not just saying, Holy Spirit, come. No, no. You engage him as you build intimacy in prayer and you take advantage of that prayer language to release superior spiritual power. Power that can change circumstances. The Lord is my shepherd. You are a man of God and you are trusting God to have a supernatural ministry. There is no superstition about it. It is the union of the word and the union of the spirit the holy spirit engaged in prayer then the holy spirit engaged in worship do you know let me tell you sincerely this our generation does not understand how worship changes people we sing a lot of songs but very few people understand the role of worship in spiritual empowerment we have mastered prayer but not worship I can pray for five hours, eight hours, ten hours. 
But chances are, if you worship for 15 minutes, anything after that, you consider it a distraction. Say, look, this worship is okay. I've had the song. I know it. Let me pray. Oh, dear. Worship is a powerful atmosphere. Listen, when you, when you worship the Lord, it's the protocol of the presence. You now begin to create the atmosphere for the presence of God to be made manifest. This is true. He will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. There is nothing special to us and in us by ourselves but when we learn how to engage that atmosphere the miraculous is atmosphere dependent you must learn how to not only carry the ark but carry the climate scientists today are laboring so much to master the art of simulating climate regardless seasons so they can make rainy season happen in dry season they don't there are i studied years ago a group of superstitious people in a part of Africa called rainmakers. These are people who know how to fraternize with spirits and change climate. And you will watch videos where they would come and dance and do all kinds of things that don't make sense. Suddenly you begin to hear thunder and clouds forming and then rain comes. They call them rainmakers. When you learn worship, you become a real spiritual rainmaker. You can make any dry season. Can I challenge you? Go to an atmosphere where it looks like God cannot move. Go to an atmosphere where it looks like people. There are times you get to a place where you see that there's no faith in the people. They look at you and even you, you wonder what brought you there. I teach you, learn to be a spiritual rainmaker. Carry your climate with you. Don't just carry your Bible alone. Carry your climate with you. And when you lift your voice to the God of heaven and immerse yourself in worship, I do not know anybody who truly works appreciably in the level of the supernatural that does not value worship. Genuine worship. Genuine worship. Genuine worship. And you are setting your atmosphere. Can I tell you? The best way is to combine all three. Worship, prayer, word fire. Oh dear. You are praying and worship is playing. And sometimes scripture is playing too. Don't say, will I understand? Leave your mind. This is spirit interaction. How many of you have listened to messages and fell asleep and in the realm of the spirit you continued listening to it? including the encounters and the impartation in that message you get up and you know that heaven is in this room i'm not alone i'm not alone i'm not alone powerful impartations saturate your atmosphere with worship and something is happening to you as a man of god you stand to minister the word of god and you are ministering with power as a business person, saturate yourself with that atmosphere of heaven and go to the boardroom. And you sit down and you are speaking. They are looking at you, but it's not you they are seeing. Their spirits are seeing someone else. Their minds cannot articulate it. What is it about this man that we are seeing? These are the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please hear me. There is such an empowerment and a grace in addition to all that I've shared there is truly an engracing that God can give an individual for the supernatural for signs and wonders how does this grace work when this grace comes upon you Number one, 
this grace causes you to desire the word more than ever before this grace causes you to desire the presence of God more than ever before this grace causes you to desire fellowship with God it's not just a grace that makes you to go and start laying hands on the sick the grace operates by working on your desire the first way you know you have carried that grace is there is an unusual desire for the word of God there is no such thing as no time an unusual desire for prayer an unusual desire for fellowship you can lock yourself for a whole day as though you're a madman there is a grace that is working in you I have spent my life seeing this grace walk this is why we rejoice every time we have the privilege of traveling from nation to nation and from region to region every time I prepare to come here I am happy because I know that I'm not coming alone you are not just coming to listen to another sermon no this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender this is the place where my life is changed Listen, whenever we're preparing for service, we don't have to find out what your problem is. We just have to find out if he's coming with us. I cannot begin to find out who is there, how sick, how oppressed. That is a labor God did not give you. All you need to do is to know that you are carrying his majesty and then in addition the graces that he has placed upon your life and you can say let's go and you can step into an auditorium like this having people following from across the globe following from all over the city and you can dare tell people that Jesus is real you can dare tell people that he can turn their lives around and the Holy Spirit moves through your words and begins to produce supernatural results some of you come and you sit down and from prayer testimonies something is happening to you you cannot even begin to explain i've been going to church but what is happening to me i will tell you is the supernatural it is not only the three-dimensional realm that works here i assure you this is mount zion this is koinonia an innumerable company of angels the spirits of just men made perfect Jesus himself the firstborn of the begotten he is here in the midst of his people in addition to all of these things when God granted me the grace for signs and wonders my life changed if you do not have the grace for signs and wonders especially if you are a minister of the gospel the supernatural you will live your life in jealousy and envy and anger you will not have results it's true and you see the thing about the supernatural is that if it is there it is there if it is not there it's not there it's as simple and honest as that many of you have come from homes representing businesses representing different career representing different situations i cannot promise you that i can come to your house i will not even attempt it i will not promise you that i can see you one on one but i have a promise there is something you can be given something greater than me something better than me 
it is the grace of God the grace that can empower you to walk in the supernatural it is a grace God has so lavishly placed upon this life and placed upon this ministry you know you are operating in the supernatural because your results happen in astronomical proportions proportions that does not look fair then you know God is in that equation one plus one minus God is two Satan can even make it zero without God if you want ten it must be five plus five nine plus one eight plus two but when you bring the supernatural into that equation even one plus zero can be ten because there is a factor that can change the calculation it is based on that that frail men like us can have the audacity to tell the nations we present you Jesus and usually they will laugh except that we are not alone hear me I bring you a cure to fear a cure to mediocrity a cure to feeling I am a second-class citizen there is a grace that can land upon your life and literally turn you to a sign and a wonder and the way God imparts these graces is that in addition to that which salvation has done all graces come from God through men to men it's time for you to begin to produce real results so that people don't begin to doubt you listen you are a man of God you're going to get into a life of trouble if you keep saying many things that don't happen the world that we live in today is an audacious world it's not as silent and sympathetic as it used to be but there is a grace that can empower you that as you say it you see it because when God said it he saw it are we blessed we are going to spend a few minutes praying and then i'm going to pray for you from the depth of my heart the lord gave us an instruction i really want you to carry this grace listen ladies and gentlemen you will marvel and wonder at what your results become like truly speaking this is no flattery if it is the lord's doing it must be marvelous in your eyes there are some of you september will look like 10 years put together one month one month one month looking like 10 years together and the next time they ask you how has this thing happened in your life be very quick to tell them that it is because of the jesus factor the presence factor the supernatural factor you just started a ministry how come in four months god is doing this through you and you can tell them honestly by my strength i can do nothing but i have accessed a grace from heaven how come your children your children who did not used to do well what suddenly happened to them how come the academics are changing i know these children they were also classmates with my children and you tell them they came for service and something came upon their lives one story and we'll pray a very true story many years ago i always enjoyed the privilege of what we know to be first position or best in class and all of those things and then one time in secondary school i was to receive a root shock and a gentleman who was a dear friend you know that year i don't know what happened and i went back to third and the gentleman took first and it didn't add up to me because we were we were friends and we we're wonderful people you can imagine you know just children thinking and then i returned home i was feeling sad and i was saying what what would, what would have been the reason and then the gentleman told me something then ah, goodness there was only one living faith branch then in Jos. 
and he told me he said he remembered that not too long before the exams all he remembers is that they did an anointing service and they gathered all of them together and then oil just came on them and declarations were made I said really when I learned this I said oh Joshua Selman my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed that was the extra factor in the life of that gentleman he came to church in addition to his study a man of God declared over his life and placed something upon his life that beat us hands down we did our best it just did not work the same way something is coming on you this night that when it comes upon your life even though you just came here with your intellect alone you came here with your connection but i stand before the god of heaven this grace that comes upon ordinary men and turns their lives around hear me for some of you when this grace comes upon you people who have long forgotten you believe what i tell you supernatural achievements by the spirit things will just begin to happen some of you by this grace you will step into ease ease that you may not be able to explain Ease that you cannot explain. You believe that? When it's time to pray, please no moving around. Don't distract yourself. This is a very prophetic moment. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray. The prayer point is, Lord, give me an encounter. Let this grace come upon my life. Lift your voice.